welcome to episode 7 of the tutorial fortress here. So, a couple of quick things. We had, we had one person request that we name the military commander after them. I've just got to figure out who that was again. That is Rakust Sarvashem. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. You go press U, go to your units list, and we're going to just scroll down until we find good old Rakust here. Now, I'm sure Dwarf Fortress has some kind of logic in how it lists these people. But I have no idea what it is. So then you go to V for View. We are going to press Y for Customize. N for New Nickname. And then this person will be named Relic. There we are. So let's take a look here at Relic's kills. Just that one dwarf who was formerly a beast but changed back into the dwarven form. Press R for their relationships. Uh, they have a lot, a lot of family, some of whom was in the fort and serving under them in the military. I saw one military up there. So that is pretty cool. Looks like no real friends or acquaintances, it's all, uh, all family. And then I had a sparring session. I'm very pleased. And it seems like, like Relic here is actually quite, um, quite happy all in all, except for the whole drinking nasty water thing. Now I did manage to, oh, what do we got going on here? A human caravan, that's fine. I did manage to fix my launcher here so we have all our utilities back the, the real way human diplomat has arrived I wonder what he's got to say nothing to catch in the swamps that is a-okay finishing our uh, weapon racks that's right we have a noble to attend to so who is that the mayor Erush, does not think her stuff is good enough Ficod the captain of the guard requires some things as well and uh, the Baron does not yet have their tomb or a weapon rack. Well, we just got the weapon rack. So let's head down here to uh, the administration level. And we'll put the Baron's weapon rack there. Let's take a drink here. Hopefully the... Um, Mayor's demands will be met by the time they're finished engraving all the walls, but it doesn't look like it. I do have a plan in mind that we can do for that. I'm hoping that these guys are going to take care of it, but it looks like no. We'll take care of Ficod after we've finished off the, um, the Baron. So what we need, we're going to need for a tomb, a couple of... Uh, it looks like the statues are being made, that's fine. Let's go to the other mason, what are you up to? Well, you don't have too much on, so we're going to add coffins into your rotation for now. Something else I want to do is, last episode we set the material preferences for the ranged dwarves, meaning that they won't fire their good arrows in training, they'll only use wooden and bolt ones that we make for them. Uh, sorry, wooden and bone. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to silver, and we're going to make bolts. But we're going to do this from the weapons order. We're going to go into this. We're going to press Q. We're going to search for silver bolt. And we're going to order 25 sets of those. Now they come in batches. Each one of those should make several bolts. And we'll only use those in combat. That's not obviously the, uh, the best use of silver. Should be used for uh, trade goods really if anything. But it's what we have it for for now. Greetings, Noble Dwarf. There is much to discuss. It's such a pleasant place you've carved out for yourselves. There is much to share. Information about civilization and world info has been updated. Okay, so he didn't actually want anything, didn't have any demands. He just wanted to show up and say, yep, the world is the world still. So we have a bunch of those idlers. We're now going to have them engrave absolutely every surface in the Baron's room, because of course he has to have the fanciest of rooms. And now we need to build a tomb for him. So we're going to go the level under the uh, the catacombs here. We're going to do private tombs, and these are going to be reserved mostly for nobles 
or dwarves who particularly impress us throughout the uh, the tutorial fortress and these don't have to be huge tombs don't have to be that impressive but the baron will demand a certain amount of finery in his tomb oh well that's not going to do i need a, i need a center tile for this for the the uh, the baron's coffin to sit in so we'll dig out just the barons for now. Meanwhile, on the surface, for the captain of the guard, we're actually going to build an office. So we're going to B, capital C, W for wall. And we're going to build a pair of them. Because I don't think it's right that the uh, captain of the guard get an office, but the captain of the entire military forces doesn't. So they're both going to get small offices attached to the back of this building here. And then let's get some flooring done. Now we'll use any kind of rough stone for the floor. It doesn't matter as much. They can have crazy paving. Actually there's enough. Uh, yeah, we'll give them some, some schist floors. And this should keep people busy. There we are. Why does that look different? Because I'm trying to build him fortifications. Those would not be useful for sitting your desk upon. There we are. So we'll, uh, we'll make our way back down for schist. And then, of course, we're going to have to um, build... An up stairwell on the side here. Just built that out of slate, I guess. Erosh is still in there. That's fantastic. We're gonna have to uh, put some fine, uh, fine furniture in his room. Oh, and we've had our first dwarf make it to Hammerlord, and now we've got a spear master as well. In fact, didn't we get um, someone heading up to that point last episode? Uh, experiencing what? Emotional shock. That seems to be going around a bit. Sure, it has nothing to do with those guys down there. Uh, they they chose to live there. What you see there are uh, mer dwarves. They they are a super rare species of dwarf that like to live at the bottom of lakes and slowly decay over time. They don't do much. There we go. We'll put our schist doors on. Like I said, these officers are going to be tiny, but the uh, the military military dwarves don't need much in their office. And to be honest, the uh, relic, the military commander, doesn't need an office at all. He's never actually going to use it. I just like giving them one because uh, it makes sense to me that the the commander of the entire military would have one. something I am going to check. Last episode we asked our Marks Dwarves to pick up military weapons as well, so let's see if they've done that. Yep, Silver Short Sword. Now has it replaced... Leather Robe. I'm not seeing... Okay, I'm not seeing a crossbow on these guys. Let's take a look at them here. Ah, there just isn't another crossbow available. So I'm guessing the boyer hasn't made enough yet. So we'll just add in a request for four more wooden crossbows. We'll make sure that we have enough quivers, because I didn't see a quiver on that guy as well. Because it is possible that um, someone assigned to hunting has basically claimed dibs on that guy's uh, crossbow. So we'll just make up one or two more. We are running very, very low on wood, so we're going to have a look around the surface and see if we can find any more of that. 
which is not looking uh, super promising. There's plenty of saplings growing. I think in a couple of years, we won't actually have too much of a problem with wood. But right now, we're not doing as well as I would like. Plenty of camels up there. I wonder if someone's hunting right now. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so there are one or two trees. We're going to take them down. Hopefully they will uh, tide us over. I'm not sure how long it actually takes trees to reach maturity, but you can see there are a lot starting to pop up across the map. I'm going to try and, uh, since the game has restarted, I'm going to try one more time for uh, beekeeping. Is that, that guy's not in anything, is he? Nope, he does not. Let's organize these guys by their profession again. Because I don't want any of the military dwarves to be trying to be beekeepers. Nope, that guy is just a, a rando. So, Mafal, please keep bees and don't freak out about it. Okay, so far he's not freaking out about it. We might be on a winner there. Cool, so let's go down and check on the progress of the mining. Because we ordered a bit of that done. Nobles. Oh, we have a mandate. See, the white mandate at the top here oh, means that he just does not want us to export armor stands. We can happily get behind that. Erosh requires that we make three bracelets. And Erosh, is, uh, Erosh does a lot of our work, actually. So, basically, if we don't now order and craft three bracelets of some kind which we can do quite easily from the craft store's workshop, he is going to get very, very annoyed at us. So we're just going to make three bracelets. But the thing is, when he gets annoyed, the captain of the guard will see fit to punish a dwarf for not crafting those bracelets. And the usual punishment for uh, disobeying a craft order like that is to be beaten to death. Dwarven justice is not for the faint of heart. Here comes the uh, the final bits of flooring for these officers. They don't have a roof yet, so we're not going to actually do anything with them just now. Uh, the human caravan's leaving soon. I don't think uh, we've had enough time to build up crafts to deal with them. We're going to wait for the, uh, the people from our, our homeland before we do any trading and hopefully just do a, one big trade. So now we have to build Big C downstairs. Just align it there, drop one down, we'll make this out of, why not, we'll use some of the last of our slate. Now these barracks are quite small, I would rather have had bigger ones, but yeah, they do fire from left to right, so that guy's just stood training. Let's see, where is, Kib was like the new guy, and he now has his high wood crossbow, so he can start training and shooting as well. Of course, if we do get invaded, they will stand at the top there and shoot down. I do have more plans. We are eventually going to, um, well, hopefully this episode, we'll actually get the moat finished so that it's all joined up. And we will um, replace that small permanent bridge there with a retracting drawbridge that we'll put here so that enemies will come running across. The bridge will retract. This one will go up and they'll be stuck on this little spit of land here. So in fact, we'll probably put the new drawbridge basically where that one is, so that enemies have a little bit of time to run across, and then as they start getting close, we pull the lever. This one goes up, this one would retract, meaning their choices were to either try and swim through the uh, river in the big armor that they'd be wearing, or to stand and get peppered with crossbows from our crossbow team for a short while, before eventually we'd set out the military dwarves, the, uh, the frontliners. Now then, we will be able to build our floor here. Awesome. And I think, yep, we're just going to build that out of schist. That's going to keep people busy for another short while. And then we can uh, make the offices there. We are going to need for that two armor stands and two weapon racks. We've got tables and chairs being built, which are also required for an office. Now then, has our tomb been dug out? It has. So we're going to designate this to be smoothed. 
and then we can put some uh, some furniture in there. We'll probably have to engrave it as well. Is that mandate being met? It is not being met yet. And of course, Fickard still needs his... Uh, he needs nicer quarters. So I guess Fickard is considered a true noble where um, Relic is not. So we'll have to get Fickard a room on the noble level here as soon as we can. But for now, we, we need to see to the uh, the Baron's needs, his fancy uh, fancy AF everything. Let's see, just how fancy is the Baron's room right now? He has a throne room, a great bedroom, great dining room. Yeah, literally all he needs now is his tomb, which shouldn't be too difficult to get. Obviously, it is going to take a while to get to this side of the map now because we have... Uh, Made the only way across that little bridge there. I'm glad dwarves have not decided to swim across that. What, what are you doing? You seem upset. Cog furnace operator. Atea throw shields is dead. Uh, uh, yeah, we we can't do much about them seeing the bodies. Unless we would, I don't know, put a floor through all of that. We, mo we may put the new drawbridge at the bottom to try and decrease traffic over here. Because they're basically walking over the bodies of their uh, dead comrades at pretty regular intervals. Oh, we've had someone being born. Looks like that was someone coming down here to, uh, to the mining level. Now, tombs are very slightly different than the memorial slabs we have because you can't really engrave a memorial slab until someone's dead a tomb and a, a catacomb level you can have ready in preparation so the dwarves will automatically just go pick up the body of one of their fallen chuck them in a box and then everybody's happy obviously there's a little bit more uh, pomp and finery involved with noble deaths they need uh, private tombs as the baron does some require less fancy things like just burial chambers or just um even just a coffin in general in a in a room with a thousand other coffins but the uh the baron wants to be lonely when he's dead i keep saying he is the baron a he we should probably figure that out cuz uh english here is kind of a central central figure for us so let's take a look yep he is a he and he's uneasy after being kept from alcohol is this still not working it still is not working. Okay, brew drinks from plants. And it seems like the uh, the new beekeeper is actually doing their job. So we're going to chuck that on. We're going to come to the surface here. Press D and then P for gather plants. And we're just going to do another big sweep of the map to gather a bunch of surface plants. But on top of that, because we've already done this once and we have a manager who should be keeping pretty good check on our stocks, we're going to have to press Z. I'm going to go across to stocks here, and we're going to find our way down to seeds. Now this, thankfully, is organized in a predictable fashion. It's all alphabetical. So we have some pigtail. What do we have the most of? We could grow potatoes and barley on the surface, and we have long grass seeds. So we'll wait for this set of uh, harvesting to be done. I'm sure we still have some, some people left with uh, gather plants in their uh, skills list oh we have another birth in the fortress that's pretty pretty cool um, kids like I say they're absolutely useless but there is something quite cool about um, seeing an infant born in your fort grow all the way to adulthood and then have his legs ripped off by a cyclops when you put him in the military that is entirely unsuited for Looks like we've uh, nearly completed the roof on the, the military officers here. So we're going to actually organize these into what they should be now. So we're going to just slam a couple of tables in the corners here. Throw some chairs behind them. We actually need more chairs. We'll build. Okay, we don't have the armor stands or the weapon racks yet either. I'm guessing we don't have any cabinets yet. We need to actually place a couple of bulk orders for those for the rooms as well. So we'll do that now. We'll, uh, we'll reorganize our masons here. Actually, yeah, that's that's pretty solid. Um, 
So on this one up here, when he's done with all those armor stands and weapon racks, we're going to go to workshop profile. We're going to press cube and we're going to add on cabinets. We're going to ask for 200 of those because we'll be using them quite a lot just for general purposes. And we're finally going to get around to digging out that stone stockpile. And it's, uh, it's going to be connected down here. It's going to go 10 back, 20 across. That's in the wrong place. So we're actually going to uh, not do that bit just there. We'll connect it here. So it will be... There we are. 10 by 20 with a, a bit of a wider entry area, I guess. And then we can give it a couple of entryways here. And we're going to do something a little bit different with the stone stockpile to speed up the um, mason's workshops. And for that, what we're going to need are some wheelbarrows. So we're actually going to order... Now, we don't need the, the manager for this because we're only going to make six with us having a little bit of a lack of uh, wood. But that will give our carpenter something to do. 13 people currently uh, free, which means this tomb has been done. So we're going to quickly throw a door in there. Going to press N for burial receptacle. But we're not actually, you know, what we're going to do first is we're going to engrave every surface of this room again. Put, you know, fancy drawings of drunk dwarves absolutely everywhere. Looks like people are actually uh, at the still now. Okay, we're brewing drinks again. That is something that people underestimate, especially if you're new to Dwarf Fortress. Like, I, I grew up in a dry house. Pretty much nobody drinks here. So, uh, oh, migrants have arrived. Despite the danger, there hasn't been any drownings here in literally weeks. I don't know why they're so uppity about this danger business. <clears throat> but we are going to designate channel... And one block at a time, from safe distances, we are going to channel out the final pieces of the moat to make sure all of the sections are at least four tiles wide, which should make it pretty difficult to climb across. And we're going to press build. We're going to go to our bridge. Uh, where's bridges? Bridges G. We're going to build another four by... Yeah, we'll go a 4x5 bridge there. We're again going to build this out of lead bars because we just have so damn many other things. And that bridge is just going to straight up retract. I'm going to just make sure I did do that right. So build G. We're going to go for 4x5. And raise direction. We press A. Needs to be on anchored edge. So that's... Is X the... Nope. S... Yes, S, bridge retracts. So this bridge, <coughs> unlike the other one, is not going to form a wall when it's done. It is literally going to slide backwards into the earth. Any goblins, elves, anything at all that's on there will be dropped into the river. I'm going to link it up to the same lever as this one here so that our bridges are either open or closed. And hopefully what we'll do when that happens is we'll trap enemies on this tiny little spit of land and give our, our marks dwarves up there time to just uh, shoot away at them. And then uh, once we've got that done we'll slowly take that other bridge apart. We'll probably, um, you know, while I'm on doing bridges we're gonna make a bridge over here that's just gonna be a rough stone bridge. It's not gonna be a drawbridge of any kind and we're just gonna make it out of uh, just straight up diorite. And that's just going to be to help speed up the process of getting to that side of the map. So that's plenty of things for our dwarves to be doing. What I am going to quickly do, bring up the therapist here. We're going to go to... Migration wave. There it is. We're going to read it. We're going to see how many dwarves we just got. We got seven. I'm going to leave... Oh wow, you can do a lot of... Uh, a lot of cool stuff, can't you? Um... You know what, for now, we're just going to turn off a bunch of this stuff. We're actually going to leave that guy with all of his cool things in the middle. That, that one super useful dwarf, a tier. 
Uh, you know what? Yep, you can keep fishing. You are a brilliant weaponsmith, so we're actually going to go up. We're going to turn weaponsmithing off them and have this guy actually take over all of the smithing duties now. we got a better blacksmith, which means, you know what? You can just be a, a fisher as well. And then on this... Uh, that guy's a plant gatherer. But we're also going to order just some more plant gatherers. Keep those guys busy. And uh, replenish our stocks a little. Looks like that guy's just running around with a fruit. Cool for him. So this is going to take a while for people to get done. That is A-OK. -okay. Let's go down and see how things are uh, progressing in the tomb. Okay, that's entirely engraved. Perfect. So we're going to press build and N. Place one of the slate coffins. We're going to place a couple of statues. Just to make sure that this room is super fancy. So people will get on with that. Do we have another chair? No, that's chain. So we're also going to build as an office. Assign this chair. One to Relic. We'll have to wait for the other one to be brought up for Ficod. Later on we'll put some cabinets and maybe a statue or two in here to make this like a little bit more fancy. There we are. So study sign chair to Fickard. Now that is that everything Fickard requires? No. What else does Fickard require? He requires a dining room, a chest, a cabinet, a weapon rack, and an armor stand. Okay. We might have to uh, find out where Fickard lives. Assign table, Fickard. We'll also assign this table over here to Relic. So those guys have their own private um, study and dining room now. But let's go down to the residential level and see if we can find Fickard's room. There, actually, there's Fickard's room. That was easy. So we can, in here, just throw down his armor stand and his weapon rack. Do we have any chests? We do, so we'll chuck him a chest as well. And I think that might be everything he needed. We'll see when, uh, when it arrives. What does Vicard still require? He requires a cabinet. You know what, we'll uh... We'll do this little nice easy way of making his room feel nicer by chucking a bunch of drawings on the walls. Okay, we've made a bunch of bone bolts. Let's check actually how many of those we ended up with because we are going to use those in our training. We have quite a bit of silver and bismuth bronze for when uh, enemies attack. And yeah, we have all these bone bolts are going to be used for training so that our marks dwarves will actually be able to uh, hit the broadside of a barn when enemies do show up. Obviously our mining has uh, taken a turn for the slow after we lost a few in that tragic, completely unavoidable, entirely not my fault event. Okay, looks like that bridge has been built. Still haven't built that one, that's fine. But we are going to now go down to our lever in the form of barracks, which apparently people are still using, so we definitely need to expand the residential area. What we're going to do is press A for add new task. We're going to press B to link it up to a bridge, and we're going to add that lead bridge. Two direct mechanisms. Awesome. Honky dory. Let's check. We are still making alcohol. We're actually pulling ahead on alcohol. That's super good. Looks like people are slowly bringing the uh, stone around to that bridge as well. And if we go down to Fickard's room, we can press build F. We still don't have a cabinet, the masons are being slow. Ooh. Oh, people are being depressed. That's not great. But, I mean, that's just... Uh, it's honestly bound to happen. We're going to order another uh, 100 cabinets from this guy. So I say, those things will get placed absolutely everywhere. We can't get chests, so we'll be throwing cabinets in people's rooms. We're nearly at the point that we will sil um, speed up this process here by a considerable amount. 
for the masons because we will have a couple we have a ghost why do we have a ghost whose ghost is this logram della harust okay let's go to our craft dwarf add new task engrave memorial slab yes he was not memorialized okay i thought he was And you know what, we're, um, yep, that's being done now. So, ghosts can get violent. To start off with, let's go to you. Let's see what kind of ghost this guy is. He's just, for now, he's just a ghostly engraver. If we were to leave him unmemorialized for a long enough amount of time he would stop being as pleasant of a house guest he would do whatever he liked like uh, you saw in a previous episode where one of the dwarves had thrown a tantrum and destroyed the kitchen not too big of a deal right cancels construct rock slab because he's frightened well you're frightened of the thing you're trying to appease so someone please get on that so right now that guy's just going around frightening things not too big of an issue did we just that is not the right slab how do we know which is the right slab build alt s slab you know what? we're just gonna have to build one of each i guess and it'll bring down the right one We are done engraving that, right? It has been done. No, we're still engraving. No, we are. We're done engraving it. There we are. He's been put to rest. Awesome. Like I say, they, they do get quite violent, the ghosts. I have seen them remove uh, dwarven limbs. Like, just straight up punch a dwarf in his leg and have it explode into gore and be gone. But we've made that a memorial hall. It's currently no owner, which is fine. That's the way we uh, we want it. It's an open memorial hall to everyone. Looks like the human soldiers are coming down here to uh, memorialize people. Is that what they're doing? Let's press V and check out what these guys are doing. No activity, diplomat. Yeah, they're just, they're just down here visiting the memorial hall. It's literally just a cave at the moment, so that's fine. Okay, so here comes the fun bit. We're going to make some stockpiles. We're going to make um, stone stockpiles. They're going to be 10 by 10 instead of our usual 20 by 10. Looks like that one's actually a little bit smaller. That's fine. We are going to hover over them. We're going to press W for maximum wheelbarrows. And we're going to say 3 in each because we did make 6. Wheelbarrows will make it much quicker to bring the stone around. But we're still not done. Because as it stands right now... The masons don't have to use these stockpiles. They can still wander around the map and get stone from anywhere they like, and they pretty much will continue to do that. So we're going to hover over this stockpile, and we are going to press G to give to pile or workshops. So this guy gets this pile. We're going to hover over this other one. We're going to press G again. And this mason gets his stone from this pile. So now those masons, instead of running up and down the fortress to get their stone, which is what slows them down quite a bit, we'll have it um, brought to them. Now we've run out of coal. That's honestly fine. We've got quite a few silver bolts. We don't need too many more. And I don't really want to sacrifice the wood to make more charcoal right now. Ah, something we do need to do. We need to go into these things. We need to press... S for change settings. We're going to go into stone and instead of disabling anything at all, we are going to go to metal ores and press D. For, oh. We're going to press F for forbid metal ores because we don't want these stockpiles taking up metal ores that won't be used for our mason's work because these stockpiles are now only allowed to give to one shop each. And that one shop will only take from this one place. So if we fill it up with our um, Galena ore, people just won't. Um... I'm going to remove that order from in there. Yeah, people would just stop working. The workshops would stop. Oh, I had lost. I, item lost or destroyed. 
there's something at the bottom of that river that's real, real interesting to these beekeepers. So I guess we're just going to have to um, turn beekeeping on once a year and allow people to do what they want from that. So something we have been meaning to do for a little while now, we're going to build Fickard his nobleman's room. Actually, does he actually need one? Fickard, what do you still require? Fickard, you require a cabinet. English, what do you require? You require a tomb. And the mayor requires better dining space. Okay, well, the tomb we can take care of right now. As uh, English, let's see. How do you feel about that, English? Okay, you have a mausoleum, so that's actually way fancier than it needed to be, but that's fine. So we need to make this room fancier. And I think we're going to do that by adding in an armor stand and a weapon rack for now. We'll see if that bumps this up as far as it needs to go. I'm hoping it does. And what was the other thing we needed? That's right, Fickard needed a cabinet. Well, Fickard, cabinet, get. Look at you, what a guy. There we are, so all we need now Okay, so Fickard isn't happy with his dining room. We can fix that pretty easily. We're just going to order, instead of everything, all of the walls of... We can't engrave these stones, that's right. Now these bricks have been built here, meaning we cannot make them fancier. What we can do is add weapon racks in there and make them fancier that way. So... Again, we're slowly going to one tile at a time to avoid unavoidable disasters. Going to finish off our moat. There we are. So it's nearly connected. And the reason I'm doing this one tile at a time is so that I can carefully manage where the dwarves stand as they do this. Because I don't want them... If I were to order, say, all of this block here to be dug out, a dwarf might stand on that tile and dig those out and lock himself in. It's just... It's become good practice not to um, overstate the stupidity of dwarves. Because you can't. That is a lesson I have learned in this uh, tutorial for us. So I think all the nobles are actually happy now, except Erosh. Why are you not happy? Still not happy with your um, accommodations. Now, these three. Actually, no. We're still we're still going to do this one tile at a time. Kind of tedious to do it this way, but it means we're not going to lose our miners again. As long as we get the entire moat dug out this way, it'll be fine. Let's check how we doing on alcohol. Oops, saving. Autumn has come. That's fine. Any moment now, this should be done. Oh, there we are. So how are we doing on those drinks? 77, still on the increase, that's great. But I think uh, I'll probably finish the moat, now that you've seen the process, I'll finish that off in between the uh, recording sessions. You don't need to see me sit and pick away at that now. What I do want to try and do is come down to the administration level here where the nobles live and we're going to make a new wing to the admin level and this is not going to be for quarters this is going to be for a couple of services that we've needed for quite a while so on one side here of the corridor we are going to add our jail and on the other 
we're going to add our hospital. So this side's going to be our jail, and the jail is going to be super simple. It is going to be one by three rooms. And they're going to be on both sides here. We will never use this many jail rooms. I can honestly say the most I've ever had is like two. Uh, fun thing about one of my old forts, one of my military dwarves got sent to jail for murder. And while he was down there, he went insane with melancholy, which is a condition where your dwarves will just refuse to eat, sleep, or do anything. But because he was in jail, the jailers were maintaining his health. So even though the guy was trying to starve himself to death, the jailers were just like, I don't know if they were actively actually feeding him or if just him being in jail was keeping him alive. Or he might have even been a vampire and I've just not realized it. But essentially, this guy who was trying to starve himself to death was being kept alive in this jail system long after his term had been lived out. Like, he'd been in that jail for years. And he, he um, similar to the way I've done it now, except the jail came straight off of the stairwells, and then I had the one by three rooms along, like, in this kind of pattern. So the guy, because of the way the jails work, I allow my dwarves to stand at their doorways while they're in jail and open the doors. So he would stand at his open doorway and just shout obscenities at dwarves who passed the stairwell. And it became kind of a character building ritual in our fortress. When you became old enough to go down to the lower levels and pick up your, your first work assignments, aka like kind of similar to like the vaults in Fallout, you would have to pass the crazy old man who was shouting about how... Uh... Well, I don't know what he was actually shouting about, but he, um, he was always shouting, and it was just one of those odd, nice little stories, air quotes, that comes from, from Dwarf Fortress. So, uh, Erosh is still not happy. So what else can we do for Erosh? Do we have any more cabinets? We do. Erosh, have have some cabinets. See if that cheers him up anymore. And while, uh, while they're digging out the... Erosh, how are you feeling now? You're still not happy. Erosh, buddy, you've got some of the nicest things in the fortress. We're gonna have to have words about, uh what you think is reasonable and Fickard uh, you can fick off because you've already got uh, a nicer office than the other military commander we will throw a cabinet in there see if that cheers him up oh a child has been possessed awesome it's not very often you hear those words is it okay craft dwarfs workshop that's honestly kind of one of the more boring workshops for dwarves to claim. Now, he's not currently doing anything. Let's see. Possessed by a strange mood. We can't... Um, blocks, bricks, bones, yes. Tree life. Blocks, bricks. Okay, so we want blocks we have. I'm thinking the thing we don't have for him is bones. Because we've been using them for bolts. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to Z. We're going to go to our animals here. And we're going to have a look and see what we can kill. Now, we don't have another turkey, so we can slaughter that. Peacock, we can kill it. Uh, yak bull, we're keeping. That's someone's pet, so we can't kill that. The keet, we only have one, so we can get rid of it. Get rid of this guinea hawk. Guinea cock, sorry. We have a few roosters, so we'll get rid of a bunch of them. We only need one male to uh, keep the breeding alive. So that should be enough uh, things listed for slaughter to keep that baby dwarf happy. Hopefully somebody gets on that pretty quick. Looks like one of them's going in there to slaughter a rooster now. So he should uh, hopefully... Oh, the outpost liaison has arrived. Awesome, that should mean we have a trade caravan as well. But we need to go down here and see if that's what uh, kiddo was missing. They haven't moved. Huh. So what was he shouting? Sorry, he was shouting bones, wood, and blocks. Now, I know we have wood and blocks, and we've just got bones. Maybe turkey bones aren't good enough. Maybe he needs something from, like, a bigger animal. Well, did we order any of the big animals slaughtered? We have a yak bull and a yak cow. I would really like to avoid killing them. Or is that two yak bulls? We have two yak bulls. We're going to slaughter one of those. Hopefully... That will give bones big enough for what this guy has in mind. Let's discuss your situation. You continue to impress. I have come empowered to elevate this land in the eyes of our realm. Cool. 
There is much to share. What request do you have of our merchants? Um, I think we're actually at the point now where we can reasonably consider actually asking for things. And what we want are metal bars. We want iron. We're going to put the priority high because we want quite a few of those. Finish speaking in our conversation. Still nothing from him. And they want from us armor, backpacks, threads, cheese, amulets, quivers. They want a few things. They're not going to get it. They're going to get what we've made, which is crafts. Wonderful dwarven crafts. So we're going to start, um, going to press G to move goods to the depot. We're going to scroll our way down until we find our uh, crafts. There we are. We only have one finished goods bin. And we're going to request our trader. Now then. Aha. So yes, the yak bones were good enough for him. Seems like the uh, the rooster's bones were too small for whatever his plan was. So you, you can get hints about what people um, want if you hover over them and press Q while they're in the workshop. So that child has begun his construction. Super fun times. We're definitely, uh, I think we might have to build workshop a second craft dwarfs workshop because we are not getting enough things to trade when people show up for that. Now then, Fickard and uh, Irush are still both upset. So what we might end up having to do is make entirely new rooms for those guys down here. But first up, we're going to order designate smooth. We're going to smooth out the jail. We are going to go up and we're going to have to go to our wood furnaces. We're going to press P. We're going to go to Q. And we're going to order 25 charcoal from each. Because we need to smith some chains. Did we make our traction benches yet? We make those here with uh, capital R. So A, capital R, A, capital R, A, capital R. And just until we've gotten the 10 that we need. These require, I think it's just tables and chains slash ropes. Chains and ropes are interchangeable in most instances. So that should be fine. Now that we've had people on the surface for a while, we're going to go to stocks. We're going to find our way back to seeds. Let's see what we have a lot of. We have a lot of plump helmet spawn again. A lot of rock nuts. And dimple cup spawn. A lot of cave weeds. We actually have a lot of um, plants we could plant down here. But it doesn't seem like no seeds. What do you say? What do you mean no seeds? Either my... Um... Oh, I bet that's what's here. I bet he's counting the stuff here. Okay, so let's see. We have three grand to work with. Which basically means we have at most two and a half grand to work with. Because again, he will need to leave with a profit. So we're going to go past all his bars and bricks. He has a bunch of ropes. We might buy one or two of those just to speed this along. Make sure we got some spare. And then we want to look at his armor. If he has any um, cheap metal armor, we're going to pick that up. But we're going to have to find our way down to it first. We... Uh, oh, a steel spear. How? Oh, that's actually quite expensive. That would be a, too much right now for us to uh, grab. But once we've got a decent um, craft industry going, we are going to be picking up a lot of the weapons that these guys bring in for us. Let's take a look at his armor, though. So, it's looking like a lot of leather armor. I see a business bronze breastplate. That's pretty cheap, so we're going to pick it up. Another one that's even cheaper, so we're going to pick that up. We'll take these low boots, because they're also super cheap. These ones are a little bit more expensive. In fact, are they different pairs? They might be. How's that worked out? Bronze low boot there. Two bronze low boots there. A bronze low boot there. But that one... Oh no, they are... Okay, so we've got two pairs of boots. Uh, we can't afford the steel stuff. We'll get those business bronze low boots as well. That's taken up around about a thousand of our trade. 
still more stuff we could get, but I think we're gonna focus the rest. Oh, we'll get that bismuth bronze. Oh no, we won't. Those are those are engraved. Those are super expensive. We'll get that cap, and that cap. Those are actually quite cheap, and we'll grab that uh, that bronze helm. Okay, that's plenty of armor for now. It's oh no, we've got gauntlets there. Pro tip: This is not nearly close to enough armor for the soldiers we have. But if we pick up just a little bit each time they come around, we'll uh, we'll get there in the end. So. Next up, we're going to grab, if we see any cheap bins of, uh, that's 75 for a leather bin, we'll take it. Because we're not doing too much hunting yet. Because there's just not that much on a map. So if we can pick up some nice cheap leather like that, we're going to. Cloth seems to be more expensive. If we see a nice cheap cloth bin, we'll pick it up. But it looks like these are all, uh, looks like the, the leather's definitely the cheaper option. So we're going to skip past the rest of this now, which they brought quite a bit. We're going to get down to the food here. Now we actually have a decent amount of food, but it's whenever I'm basically done trading, I'll make my way down to the food section and just buy up whatever's left because it, it yeah, you, you never have enough food. Well, you never have too much food anyway. And what we're going to do is just go down to around 800 on the trade meter. That should leave him happy enough. Our trader has gotten better over time, so let's see how he likes that trade. Yep, happy enough. So we can now unrequest our broker. They've bought a bunch of shapely rocks from us. And we've walked away with some food and some other nice things. The jail has been dug out. so And now being smoothed out. We're now going to focus on making our... Um, hospital so we're going to add two doors here and the hospital isn't going to be a, a super fancy room it's going to be actually quite utilitarian it's just going to be a big old square because this is a government building gosh darn it and they don't like none of that fancy fancy schminer, uh, finery at least not for people who aren't true nobles because your chief medical dwarf does count as a noble, and what's going to happen is he's probably going to inherit these rooms from um, the mayor, who we're going to build a new room. Looks like there's uh, stone already being hauled out of here with those wheelbarrows. And you can see just how much faster people move with those versus when they're just carrying the stone. Oh, we have that new amulet, a yakborn bed. All right, kid, I'm impressed. Let's take a look. We have Glumauer, the curled bowl, a yak bone bed. So I'm picturing an actual, um, like circular bed in a, in a hemisphere so that it's just packed with down and whatever else and the bed actually kind of rocks a bit. So it would be actually like super cool on a boat, I guess. Let's take a look. A pallet for dwarves to sleep on, which must be made of wood. Haha, <laughs> we disagree. It prevents the stress of sleeping on the ground and can be used to designate a bedroom. Used by one dwarf or a couple. A dormitory used by multiple dwarves or a barracks. We already knew most of that, but let's look at the description. This is a yak bone bed. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with round diorite cabochons and encircled with bands of sugaro rib wood. This object menaces with spikes of yak bone. Well, no wonder he wanted, um bigger bones if he's making a bloody bed we're gonna go to rock crafts on repeat rock I don't know we're gonna go to rock mugs on repeat and we're gonna give that order to both of our craft stores workshops because we just have a little bit uh, a little bit of stuff going on we're gonna go to our forge here we're gonna go to shift uh, shift P Work orders, Q. We're going to go with lead, and we're going to go with chains. We're going to forge 15 of these. They're not going to be um, super useful a lot of the time, but it's just one of those things you make a quick batch of them, and then when you actually need them, you have them lying around. Plenty of things being slaughtered. How are we doing on alcohol now? 76. Are we still making alcohol? Yes, it's just... Uh, we're using it as fast as we're making it. Are we still pressing? No, we're not. So it looks like... Uh, what we can do is add on to there, make mead, and 
brew from fruit because we've collected quite a bit of that, I'm imagining, from all of those surface plants. We still need to build a uh, great dining hall. Hospital is being dug out. That's super awesome. And we still need to extend, extend our residential area. There's just a lot of work to be done right now in the fortress, which is a good thing. You don't want to be um, having nothing to do and 10,000 idlers. Right, so hopefully I'll be able to show you how to get a jail set up and a hospital before the end of this episode here, which will be in just a couple of minutes. So first off, you grab beds. We're going to have to order a few of these built as well. I'm going to actually go and I'm just going to order 100 beds. I don't think we have that much wood, but uh, it means as we get it. Q, work orders, bed, 100. Oh, and I've just realized, would I have just used that out artifact bed down the jail? That one's blue. I'm guessing that's the artifact bed. Build bed. We'll take a look because it'll have a different sprite. That might be it there, actually. Uh, you know, yes, we're gonna we're gonna remove that bed. We're gonna designate the hospital to be smoothed. We're gonna order some doors. Because we're also going to need beds for the hospital here. Now hopefully if we press build and then J, we'll... No, not... Is it V? Chain, yep. V for chain. We'll add those in the middle there. Three jail cells will do for now. We can complete our jail at a later date. Looks like people are bringing the doors first. That's fine, once all the uh, ropes or chains are in place, we can quickly show you how these work. So you press Q, you hover over it, same as always. R to make room, press enter, and then you press J to assign this to the Justice Department. So again, we're just gonna do exactly the same thing. And what this means is anyone with a sentence that is considered light enough will be sent down to the jail for X amount of days. In fact, we should actually have over here a Justice tab and you can see we actually have so we have a T of the fishery worker he was witnessed with disorderly conduct so we're actually going to convict him of that and what should happen is someone should bring him down and put him in the jail rooms there now I think disorderly conduct carries a um... hopefully he's not being beaten to death right now Because they do, they do sometimes just beat dwarves instead of, uh... yep, there we see our, there's Fickard, bringing the fishery worker down. There we are, he is now chained in that room, and as you can see, he can't stand in the doorway, and if anyone else was in jail, he could speak to them, which I consider just a basic uh, dwarven right. But uh, he is now stuck in there. That is his sentence. And final thing we're going to do for this episode, we're going to make our hospital. So we're going to build beds. Of course, we are, we're not going to use our super fancy bed. I'm just going to use whatever beds we happen to have. And then, I think it's uh, the shift R. Shift R for traction bench. We have a few of these that we're going to put in between the beds as well. Now, so far, that has everything it requires to be a hospital. Some people I know will actually set up separate stockpiles for thread and um, soap and what have you nearby. But we just don't... Uh, we're not going to do that just yet. So how do we actually turn this into a hospital? Oh, is someone actually here to be treated? Or is, oh no, he's just sleeping here, I think. So we press I for a zone. We select the entire room. Fill it out. Then we press H. That is now a hospital. And shift H for information. 
You see, this should have a bunch of cloth, thread, splints and crutches. We are going to have to make those. It has no powder, it has no buckets, and it has no soap. So this is a very poorly equipped hospital. It also requires tables. Now, I'm not sure what the tables are for, but the doctors will use them for things. So we're going to put a couple of tables next to those beds. Now they will take the, the thread and other things from around the fortress. I'm not sure how we acquire the... Um, Well, I know we can buy the soap and the powder for the casts, but I'm not sure how we actually make that ourselves. But we have one final thing to do before the um, hospital is complete, and that is to get medical staff for it. So we're going to go to our therapist here. And there is this area here. Oh, we actually have someone who's real good. Who are you? Zeneg... Decimus, who's currently stone detailing. Well, Zeneg, I have good news for you. Because Zeneg here is now our chief medical dwarf. So, if anyone requires medical care, Zeneg will get on that. We will, at some point, um, recruit a couple more of the Medici. I do have a custom thing for those, which I can use now that I've shown you how it works. But, um, essentially, what we're going to do, we're going to give Zeneg that room there. And we're going to build another room down here for Irush, who is just being a bit of a turd about not having fancy enough things. We'll probably have to do the same for Fickod and just move his furniture up here. And I'm also going to order the expansion of this place here. Now, I'm going to do that in between episodes because you've seen how all of that works a few times now. And I'm also going to try and finish off this moat and remove that those two static bridges there so that only the real bridges remain on the map which will hopefully stop people walking over those bodies but as i said that's going to happen in between episodes as always folks thanks for joining me and i hope to see you next time